Hey, yo, what's going on with it once again, ladies and gentlemen, bros, women, fanboys, and fangirls, and as always, the talkers and geek out there. This is Mr. Nintendo Sony Free 2011, aka Manny Wolverine. And of course, you guys have rest intros and outros and intros and outros with channel follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Anyways, um, to get here in the background, I'm playing a little bit of like some Earth Brown Mother series because it has to be one of the most, well, not today, yesterday, had to be one of the most saddest announcements and one of the most longest of times I can remember. And ironically enough, it's almost on the same day where um, one of the most legendary people from the mid late 90s to early 2000s, Steve Irwin. Crocodile Hunter, he passed away. So I'm not saying Reggie Fees and that man passed away, but unfortunately he announced his retirement over on uh, Nintendo America and Twitter and all that, the other social media networks. <sighs> and it, it just breaks my heart to know that this dude's no longer going to be the CEO president of one of the best video gaming industry companies that brought so much joy, not animosity per se, but uh, it's a very like um, beautiful, wonderful, nostalgia times, and um, <laughs> it's not easy to say this. Man, <laughs> they can hear that shit in the background. That actually made me cry a couple times. That's why I had to keep doing this video over and over because uh, I had to hold back tears. That damn, this guy is um, not going to be running the headquarters for Nintendo of America anymore. Yeah, I had to come to come to terms with that. So, um, actually, did talk about this in my video which either I already have posted by now, or I just talked briefly a little bit. I'm not sure when, I, when this video is going to, be, going to be posted either before or after that, but we'll see in due time. So um, I'm going to turn this down a little bit before I get this little slideshow starting up. Because uh, let's not forget all the wonderful, amazing times this guy gave us a lot of joy and happiness when the world out here, like um, in reality, not just for YouTube, but like everywhere else, even in the physical world, reality that we live in every single day, you know, it's not a pretty place. It's a very fucked up place. And at least in times of darkness and stuff, he gave us a little bit of joy to, like, enjoy some of the guys' games and, like, other de indie developers. That's why I had to, like, play this song in the background. It's like a one-hour extended thing, so I'll leave the link in the description box down below. Unless you people are really hard, heavy, like, hitting, like, hardcore fans of, like, Earthbound Mother series, unfortunately not like I am, because I am fortunate I've never got to play any of the Earthbound Mother series. I played like a few emulator ones, but it's not the same as the physical one. That's the thing. Sorry if my belly's a little bit bigger than normally, because I normally don't dress up to be in a very serious moment of time like this. Anyways, um, without further ado, let's begin. Actually, I'm going to be reading from Wire Magazine. I should have been reading from the other one like I did with the Ten Enthusiasts. So it says, um, this is from Julie M Munchie. Munchie? Muncie? I think that's how say, you say Julie Muncie. From um, Wired Magazine or Wired News, this is Nintendo of America President Reggie fils is retiring. Reggie fils has been at Nintendo since 2003. I thought it was 2006 or 2007 when um, the Wii made his first debut appearance. I guess it wasn't. So it says, um, this week has been a roller coaster for the world of video games. At, top, at the top of the news list, one of the biggest names in the industry will be leaving his post mid-April. I thought it was early April. Like, April 2nd? I, I thought this was, like, gonna be a joke. It's, it's fucking serious. Wow. But anyways, yeah. Let's continue on. Oh. I'm not doing no shameless plugs or anything, but I used to use a little bit of axe so I could get in the mood of making this video. This video might be 30 minutes long, more or less. Who knows? So, it goes on to say, um, one of the biggest... Oh, yeah. I already read that. Bioware's Anthem is awfully buggy, but hopefully getting better. And the Steam store just got a little smaller. Read the full replay rebound below to see what else that we find. See what else happened this week in gaming. Reggie fils Maze, gaming's cool as dad, is retiring from Nintendo of America. Ever since 2003, Reggie fils has been the most, be not beautiful, the most visible face of Nintendo of America. And a Fattable, I think this is, I thought it was affordable, it says a fattable. You think I'm making this up, then I'm actually serious. And it says a fattable right there. Alright, so um, let's keep moving. An affatable, authoritative, middly, <laughs> mildly edge, edgy presence at the gaming com company mi Microsoft. At the gaming company mostly geared towards kids. Well, it's not really just towards kids, it could be for grown adults too, such as myself. 
people that grew up with it. Even people in like a little bit older than me in the mid late thirties, because I'm already a thirty year old fucking man. So <laughs> I'm kind of like a grandfather in a way as far as YouTube goes and shit. But reality, I'm still kind of young IRL a little bit. Not that much, but I'm getting there. I'm not gonna say I'm starting to get gray hairs. I'm getting like one or two of them though. So yeah, it sucks. Fuck, sucks like a motherfucker to get old. But that's just the way life is. So it goes on to say, da 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 da. Yeah, I already read this part. I'm gonna read it again. An affordable, authoritative, mildly edgy presence at a gaming company, mostly geared towards kids, which is not always true all the time. Maybe Labo was, but that's a. Now, after 16 years with the company, most of these serve as president and COO Reggie Fiza may announce that this week he'll be retiring effectively April 15th. For a lot of fans, Reggie was iconic, an iconic, a symbol of Nintendo, just as much as any of its characters were. He will be missed. NOA's current head of sales, Doug Bowser, is set to replace him. Yes, that's his real name. And I was watching a couple of the memes just to make a little bit more light of the situation. Which I should have pressed this a long time ago. The dude that's taken over is like, oh... I'm giving Bowser the king, the kingdom keys of Nintendo. <laughs> oh man, the whole body is ready thing. You know that? I feel like that's never gonna die. He will be the living legend for many years to come. Whether I end up having children in the future or not, you know, I could just sit, sit down and tell them what the video game industry was like in the 90s, the 2000s, and then 2010s at the time. Because by then, <laughs> I'm gonna be old as balls. I'm already starting to get old as well. But anyways. <laughs> Oh man, let's let's not forget all the really really good fun times we had to watching us dude with all the E3s going down all the time. That's what I was wondering. Why wasn't in February's like Nintendo Direct last week? Why was Reggie Fiza May not around? I'm wondering that to myself. Like, I'm thinking, why in God's name or Archie's God's name that um Mr. Fiza May isn't attending any of the E3 things? It was end up being one of the Japanese like Nintendo Japan um, head of the CEOs over there instead. It is what it is, though. Or he should have at least got Bill Trenton to do it for Nintendo of America. Or the UK over there. But I digress. I'm not talking about nothing about Reggie right now. <laughs> I remember the first time I saw this dude. I thought he was a complete joke. A laughing stop. But hey, you know what? The dude grew on me, man. I honestly did. I never got the chance to shake his hand or meet him in real life. I got it with certain like popular individuals. Which I don't mean to toot my own horn. Because I have met like two other famous YouTubers. Which, um, she's a lot more bigger now. She used to be, which is, um, Tiffany Garcia or Tiffany, um, Rodriguez. I has come with a couple years ago. And I met another one. Oh, I forgot what their name was. It wasn't some black dude. It was another dude that was like that, though. This other dude, he wasn't really, really famous anymore. Through TR Topic Reviewer. And then a couple other people as well. Which I actually just met last week, Saturday. Which was, um, for the Pokemon Go community. I mean, they don't have over 100,000 subscribers. They're getting there. Which two of them did. I thought the dude had 721,000. He had over like 1.7 million subscribers, which was the two guys that got their channel taken down, which I talked about in my last video. By the way, if you want to check that out, link's down below, which is um, trainer tips, not, not just trainer tips. I think he had 921,000 last time I checked. And Mystic7, which is crazy. Um, at first, I thought he was going to be a douche, but no. I'm not trying to get too off topic, but I remember I met JT Gilly, Pokemon Master Holly, and. Um, Mystic Seven, and um, they seem to be real chill, humble, down to earth people. You know, I talked about a good ten minutes about them with life outside. Of even the other dude, the guy that's not even super famous, but I seen him in smaller YouTuber channels like um, for Pokemon, Pokemon Go YouTube channels like Glenn, the guy that's always in the Secret League. <laughs> I know he was on a couple other channels, which another dude he's been missing for uh, about two months now, which is DX One. I don't know what the hell happened to him. Yeah, but Glenn, he was a lot more, even more chiller than the other people were. I talked about, like, you know, sometimes it's a little bit dangerous, like, trying to do live streams, like, out there and outdoor vlogs. Like, sometimes, even when I'm doing my chat and breezes, I gotta occasionally watch my backs. I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. But, um, other than that, ladies and gentlemen, man, I know I said I was gonna do 30 minutes, but I, I'm gonna have to cut it down, because I'm gonna start crying when I hear more of this video. And I'm going to say rest in peace to Reggie Fisa, man. You left a huge legacy at Nintendo Directs. You, you were the man, the myth, the legend. You, you were everyone's favorite freaking guy to watch. Besides Mr. Satoru Iwata that passed away. Huh? Not seeing him in Nintendo, Nintendo of America anymore. Like, Well, not physically because I didn't know him personally. But 
Now seeing him at like the head of every single like um, tabloid and shit from the 90s and stuff. Or not the 90s, or early mid late 2000s, and having him be the face of Nintendo, no longer existing anymore. Um, he's always gonna be my thoughts and my prayers, man. And hopefully the guy, he does really really well for himself. I mean. I don't know, hopefully it was known allegations or SJWs that tried to take him down handy. henceforth the reason why he had to retire from Nintendo. Hopefully that wasn't it. I'm really hoping that's not what it was because I know this is another off-topic related thing. I'm not really a big into like sports like basketball and football, but I heard on Twitter a couple hours ago before I started doing this video that um the CEO guy or like the, the not the co-founder, but the original owner of the Patriots, he had to step down for like sexual assault, sexual allegations, but... That's a whole other thing I'm not going to talk about. So same with the whole Jesse Smollett thing. I'm very aware of it. That's not the type of um, content I talk about in this channel. There's millions of other YouTubers that talk about that as well. I mostly focus a lot on anime and video gaming industry stuff. I try to like tend to like back away from not negative bullshit that's out in this world. I used to do that a lot in the late 2000s, early 2010s on my older channel, but I don't do that on this channel anymore. I did it on this channel for a brief period of time, especially with conspiracy theories and all this stuff, but... That shit kind of got, got me down. I do listen to it occasionally, but not a lot like I used to. I still believe it, too. So, um, to that I say, Mr. Fizeme, um, Godspeed with you, man. God freaking speed, because you gained so many people's lives so much more happier and brighter whenever you were on the D Nintendo Direct. Even though we weren't physically there to see you, like virtually we were able to see you. Some of us, you probably saw it in real life. Who knows? It just is what it is, because, quite frankly, this man, uh not only was a man a myth and a legend, you know, he knew how to be soft and very sentimental with his fans. I'm not sure that's how he was in real life, because once again, I cannot say say that I didn't physically see him there person face to face. I didn't get to shake his hand or any of that stuff, but Mr. Fiesa, man, if you do happen to watch this video, um, not only did you make my life, even like a little bit more darker times when I was struggling through a lot of financial stuff, which fortunately I wasn't able to buy the Wii U because I was going through a couple personal things off of YouTube at that time, which I'm not going to get into because... That's a little bit of my private, personal, real life. Um, brought happiness and satisfaction. And I don't mean to take that out of context either, so get your minds out of the gutter for my younger um, subscribers out there, my younger audience, my younger viewers. He changed the game up so well. Even made real good relationships in the last few months with um, Phil Spencer, the one that was for Microsoft's um, headquarters for Xbox One, that whole gaming industry there. And the other dude, Sean Layden, for a lot of the PS4, um, the Sony's PlayStation series and all that, which they're going to be coming out with PS5 soon. You know I'm a huge Sony fan as well. <sighs> they just didn't have the energy and the drive as much as Mr. Fiza may did. And I'm a little bit nervous. I'm a little bit skeptical about this dude, Douglas um, Bowser, taking over Nintendo as the new um, CEO or COO president of Nintendo pretty soon. I'm a little nervous about it. I'm a little sentimental, not sentimental, but a little uh, worried that... <sighs> I doubt Nintendo Japan's gonna let this happen. Like, Mr. Um, Miyamoto, he's probably gonna end up retiring pretty soon. Along with a couple other people, like Bill Trennan and all of them. And all the people that we've seen so many for the past couple of years, since like 2011, 2012, and then direct started. A lot of them are gonna start either retiring or quitting. Not because they want to, because they probably love the fuck out of Nintendo's company. And again, at the same time, they are a business. And I'm not trying to get my feelings too involved, but I had to a little bit. Just. Just for this exact moment, man. And, um, <laughs> he was an innovator, the man. I mean, granted, he might have just been the face of Nintendo, just a marketing brand and all that, but to me, the guy was one of the funniest, hilarious ass dudes on the planet. And even in dark, fucked up times of my life, same with Satoru Iwata. I didn't know him personally, obviously. I didn't even know his name, but some of the games that he helped create, especially Pokemon, um, not just red, blue, and yellow, but the other one, gold and silver. I know he wasn't the one I created. It was the other one, Satoshi Jijiri. And then after that was Junichi Masoda. But it's crazy to think that I'm not going to see this dude's face anymore. No more E3 conventions. No more Gamescom. No more Tokyo Game Shows. He's not going to be at any of those places. I'm not sure he's still going to be like a special guest, per se. But man, the way the dude innovated the industry, man. He brought so much positivity to a lot of his presences every year. I'm not trying to treat, treat him like if he's Jesus, so I'm gonna worship the dude, because I don't know the dude personally. Maybe he had his own personal private struggles out of the spotlight. You never know. He was just a normal human being like all of us were. You know, a lot of the jokes and the memes, he's accepted it. He didn't take it as a salty thing. He never banned people like off of the Nintendo network or banned certain people like 
to go to Nintendo conventions. Even that one dude, like Etika or whatever. I remember he met Mr. fils and I know he said something really stupid or slick to him, but Reggie fils he still kept smiling and, like, pressing on. That's how he shows you how much bravery and how much freaking guts and bolas, the cojones, this dude had. Nobody could fucking say nothing to this man. This guy was, I'm not going to say he was right all the time. Those maybe one or two times he might have made a few mistakes or whatever, but nothing super detrimental, like how unfortunate how the... That other very legendary anime voice actor for the past over two weeks, Vic Magnona, Magiana. It's been in a lot of hot water and shit like that, but it is what it is. Oh, yeah, one other extra thing before I go. I know I said I was going to be doing 30 minutes. It's probably less than that. Who knows? Um, I'm not sure what other innovations or um, ventures he's going to be going on to next. I'm not sure if he's going to be, um, you know, hanging the Super Mario cat for good. I remember the, the one of the most funniest ones I saw him was with him before the late Satoru Iwata before he passed away. They did that, they did that whole Smash Bros. Wii U like little thing where Reggie was like, and then uh, Iwata was like, that was really, really cool, man. One of the most unforgettable moments, I will personally say myself, it brought me so much joy and animosity. I remember I was still doing reaction videos at that time, which I might bring back next year, if not this year. Hopefully, when I get a little more extra money for like investing a camera and stuff. I still do got IRL jet my work I gotta do and stuff. <laughs> but man, that that blew the hell out of my mind. I was something I was not even expecting at all in the slightest. This is when the Wii U was still relevant before the switch took over on me. With that being said, um, thank you for surfacing me. I know I keep repeating myself. Um, not only did you bring joy to here to the United States, but all around the damn world. You are an iconic figure. There's even people that made amiibos after you. They're probably gonna be telling their kids and their grandkids how much of a really, really cool, awesome guy this guy had such a freaking way with words and when it <laughs> had, has such a legacy with the generation that I'm in right now. As a Nintendo fan, not even just as Nintendo fans, but in the video gaming industry as a whole, this man changed lives, man. In a, in a certain way, especially when it came to like competitive stuff like Smash. He met a lot of the Twitch streamers. He he traveled across the country, like, talking how great the freaking product is. You know, sometimes, yes, Nintendo does a little bit of screw-ups here and there. I'll be in, I'll admit that. You know, granted, I was six, seven years old, way back in the day when I got that SNES back then. One of the first consoles I got, that, that one in the PS1. That's why I was always a console gamer first before a PC game. I didn't get in a PC. And I've said this a couple times until, like, 2009. By the time I was 20 years old at that particular point in life. And that's when I got a lot, a lot of zombie shooter shit like Left 4 Dead, Dead, Dead Island, The First Killing Floor. A couple games like that. I was really over obsessed with that shit. Like how people were addicted to freaking World of Warcraft and League of Legends. I wasn't, it wasn't that, that bad where I didn't just stop using the bathroom and shit. Of course, I gotta keep doing that. It's so the way I'm gonna keep living besides paying bills and taxes. That's all I gotta say for now. Mr. fils your body will always be ready. And um, I'm never going to forget you, man. Good luck to whatever else that you do in your life. And um, you will be surely best. I mean, you're not dead, thank God. Keep living the rest of your years as time goes along. Because you <laughs> define what it is to be a freaking, a true fucking gamer. And that's it. I know a lot of the like, um, Nintendo fans out there that talked about it. I know Game of Swing talked about it. Pro Mario's probably going to be talking about it pretty soon. A couple other Nintendo fans, the Pokemon fans, even people that are just purely Sony and like Microsoft fans only. They're probably going to be talking about this man pretty soon too. Which they might have already had by this point. And with that being said, that's, that's why I was dressed for this occasion. <laughs> I look like a chef in this time. <laughs> Anyways, um, that pretty much said, hey, hopefully Douglas Bowser does not disappoint. He's got big ass shoes to be filling in. Hopefully he realizes this. Because there's going to be a lot of ass loads of pressure. I know he's not going to be maybe exactly like Reggie fils -Aimé, but I just hope he doesn't end up being boring like um, Tatsumi Kimishima was. That's it. Peace. Links in the description box down below to this um, article here. Not article. Yeah, the article for the Wired News magazine. And links in the description box down below to that full one-hour track of um, Mother Earthbound series called The Love's Love Thing. That's it. Peace out once again, ladies and gentlemen, bros, women, fanboys and fangirls, as always. I'm talking to Nikki Kamadis out there. I will see you when I see you guys. Good day, have a good night, wherever you're at on the universe out there. Stay tuned for future article session reviews, including video game industry news, anime manga news, internet news, and that pretty much wraps up the video. Take it easy, stay safe. Peace out, my like sauerkraut. Ladies and goodbye. I will see you all on the flip side. Take it easy. I'm going out. I'm going to be listening to more of this on YouTube or SoundCloud. Later. <laughs>